Welcome to a reading, prayer, and reflection on the Passion of Jesus Christ. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had his sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold, and they were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium, in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone, in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. 
And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head, and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came out to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench, in a place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of the scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of a hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for the fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, 
also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. Now let us rest, pray, and meditate for a minute on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's passion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray silently on your own for a minute. Lord Jesus, you came down to earth and humbled yourself to humanity's level and even allowed yourself to be handed over to be crucified by humanity. And it is our fault. It is the fault of our sins that this may have come to be. But Lord, we cannot, we cannot thank you enough for sacrificing yourself for our sins and saving us. Even though none of us deserve it, we are all sinful. We all choose to turn our back on you sometimes. Just as Peter did, denying you three times outside the gates. Just as all the apostles did, cowering away in fear of being arrested, persecuted and dying in the same way. Lord, help us to not be afraid of our faith, of our faith in you, and to not hide it. Oh, we can't imagine how horrible, how horrible the torture must have been and how much weight he must have felt carrying the weight of our sins on, on the cross, the weight of all of our sins constantly turning our backs on you and choosing other things over you, Lord. Your friends and your apostles turning their backs on you as well, and humanity too, handing you over to be crucified, yet you having no fault, living a perfect and holy life with your will perfectly aligned to God's will. Yet, we choose to crucify you. And sadly, if you were here, if you were here in person today, undoubtedly, humanity would make the same decision. And Lord, we are so sorry. And as you've said in, when you were on the cross, Lord, forgive, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And sadly, Lord, many of us do not know what we do day in and day out, choosing other things over you and putting you on the back burner. Lord Jesus, please help us to put you first and foremost, you above all else. Let us withhold the first commandment to love the Lord, your God, with your mind, your heart, 
and all your soul. Help us to bring others close to you as well. Lord, we also acknowledge and accept God's will that he had for you and understanding that this was all part of the plan. This was all part of God's plan from the beginning. He knew and you knew exactly what would happen, exactly that humanity would betray you and that we would turn our backs on you. And yet, while we were still sinners, you sacrificed yourself in such a, and died such a horrible death to save us so that the faithful may be united with you and God the Father in heaven forever. And for this, for this, we cannot thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough. We cannot even begin to imagine the amount of pain and torture it must have been. And the public humiliation in front of crowds of people. The pain of being scourged and whipped repeatedly. And being mocked. With a, crown, with a crown of thorns being placed on your head in mockery. It must have been, it must have been horrible and so painful. Lord, but you accepted it with grace. And then, of course, being crucified, essentially just dying of torture. being driven through your through your feet and through your hands and slowly suffocating on the cross and today that cross and your your death it is one of the truest symbols of your sacrifice for us and showed how much you loved us. Your love is so strong and so everlasting and so powerful that we can't even we can't even comprehend. We can't even begin to comprehend what your love is like and what God the Father's love is like for us. For he loved us so much he created us in his image and likeness. And while humanity has done horrible horrible things over the course of history and continues to do so, continues to make mistakes, continues to put things above you and break the commandments over and over. And there's so many horrible things that happen in the world today. But yet, still, you came down to earth, humbled yourself, and died for us, and died for our sins. Even though we don't deserve it. You constantly give us second and third and fourth and five hundredth chances to redeem ourselves. And it's inevitable that we will continue to sin and fail you. But regardless, you remain merciful <laughs> and you always are quick to forgive. We thank you for that too, Lord. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for giving us so many chances because you know, you know that we need it and we absolutely do need it and accept it. Help us to come to you through the sacrament of confession. Help us to come with our burdens and with all of our sins and hand them over to you through the priest and allow our sins to be forgiven through the sacrament of confession. Help us to come closer to you and to encounter you through the sacraments, especially through reconciliation and receiving your body and blood through the Holy Eucharist. Lord, help us to strive for better. Help us to do better. Help us to stand up for you and to spend more time with you and to develop a more personal relationship with you. And that on our last day, on the last day of our lives, we may come to meet you and you, may, and you may ask us, how much did you love me? Or you may see us, or we may see you, and immediately recognize, hey, I know you. 
I know you. And I love you. More than anything. More than anything else in this world. Even more than our families. More than our families, our friends, any materialism in this world. More than money, fame, power, status. More than anything, Lord, help us to love you above all. And help us to continue to worship you and not take your grace or your sacrifice for granted. We ask all of this through your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please take more time to rest, contemplate, meditate, and pray on the passion of Jesus. I kindly invite you to pray a rosary or a Divine Mercy Chaplet that will be linked in the description below. Tomorrow I will post the Stations of the Cross, and I hope you will find time to join me in prayer and meditation further on Christ's passion. Thank you for praying today. Keep on praising Jesus, and I hope to see you all in the next one.